Welcome to San My Shuno, the bustling metropolis that never sleeps from the older part of the city to the newer part. There is always something to do and to see. Today, we're going to take a tour around the whole city and introduce all of the residents that live within the community. Our tour starts in the Spice District at the hub of the local community. Warehouse Square was once a busy warehouse storing tea and spices back in the late 1800s. Now it has a menagerie of different uses. A state-of-the-art gym complete with an overpriced membership fee. A five-star restaurant that overlooks the harbour area. A community garden full to the brim with produce free for all. A laundrette to wash and dry all of your clothing needs a thrift store to hunt through and find some vintage fashion, a bubble tea vendor with seating to watch the world go by, a bookshop that stocks the rarest and oldest of books, and an underground nightclub to dance the night away until the early hours. You'll be spoiled for choice at what to do here, so come on down and experience Warehouse Square for yourselves. So let's meet the residents of the Spice District. Starting at Market Avenue, a trio of brownstone townhouses overlooking the main square and harbour behind. Starting at the first townhouse with Lorena, a renowned food critic and a history professor wife, Dorothy. They recently moved into this townhouse and renovated it from top to bottom and now spend their days enjoying all their house has to offer. Their next door neighbours who reside in the Black Townhouse are the Rivers family, Dad Francis, Mum Alessandra and their teenagers Olive and Ezra. Francis is a music journalist, Alessandra is a paranormal investigator, Olive and Ezra hate school life and are counting down the days when they can leave. The last townhouse is split into two separate apartments. Living in one of those is Finley, a very talented and respected drag queen on the city's queer scene, and his neighbour Milo, talented in his own field of comic book artistry. After a few years of living near each other, they yes. both fell in love and plan on getting married very soon. Across the square, are the Coal Pepper House Apartments. And we start off our tour in this colourful apartment with the mother and daughter duo, Dolores and Deja. Dolores, a retired nurse, has welcomed her daughter back into her home after Deja experienced a rather bad breakup with her ex-boyfriend. Deja's passion lies within music and with her newly found single life, she feels she can finally chase her dreams. The next apartment over live the Pancake family. Dad, Joe, moved in with his son, Sam, and his granddaughter, Lizzie, after Sam's wife died during childbirth. Joe is retired and enjoying the slow life at home and his love life with Dolores. Sam is a sous chef at Warehouse Square restaurant and loves his job. He got to know Deja since she moved back and is completely smitten. But this dynamic might prove difficult to take any further because of his dad's relationship with her mum. Lizzie loves having her granddad living with them. And you can always hear the both of them laughing and getting up to lots of mischief together. Now over the hall live the Novak family. You can usually find them hanging out together on their balcony. Dad, Anthony, Mum, Liddy, and their children, Henry and Molly. Anthony, who is originally from Poland, is the apartment block janitor. And you can usually find him tinkering with something around the house. He's also just put in an application to start his own business so the block might have to search for someone new to look after the place. Liddy, originally from Scotland, is a paediatric doctor, but has taken some time out from work to look after Molly and Henry. But money is starting to get tight, so she'll go back to work soon and they can hire a nanny to help out. Henry is adjusting to life in the city slowly. 
He misses the green mountains of Poland, but is thankful to have some friends to help with him feeling homesick. Now we move over to another block of apartments, Jasmine Suites. We start with the Singh family, Dad, Isan, Mum, Myra, and their new arrival, Adish. Isan is a computer scientist with a leading tech company that is dreaming of starting his own one day. He's also hoping for an office that isn't squished into a small room with a crying baby. Myra is a history professor, but is on maternity leave at the moment and is soaking up every beautiful and challenging moment motherhood is offering. Both of their families do not support their relationship, so Isan and Myra cut ties with them to live with each other's love. And that, my friends, is more than enough for everyone. The final apartment is home to three university students, Ada Malone, Percy Rowland, and Giovanni Martinelli. They all coexist in this rather rundown apartment close to the subway for uni. Ada is studying drama and hopes to one day be up on the big screen. She is nearing the end of her course at uni and cannot wait for the day she can leave her job and start a role in something big. Giovanni is originally from Italy but moved to San Marciuno after his parents pushed him into doing something more with his life. But he's not taking university seriously in the slightest. His interests lie in other areas. Percy is a genius, from making mobile apps to viruses. He is studying computer science at university. All of his socializing is done online and you'll always find him at his PC from day to night. He'd also like you to stay the hell out of his room. Now we move on to the arts quarter area of the city with its new high-rise apartments, prestigious penthouses, vibrant square and the famous San Marciuno Museum of Modern Art, which is where we start our tour today. San Marciuno Museum of Modern Art, or MoMA as it's known throughout the city, is a brutalist designed building nestled in the center of the arts quarter with its glass atrium full of sculptures and its floors of carefully curated art pieces. You'll be spoilt for choice at what to see here. The museum has a bar that specializes in art themed cocktails and is open late into the evening for events. Below ground is the museum curator's quarters where lots of priceless art is stored and looked after by the city. So come and visit San Maishuno Museum of Modern Art and get whisked away into your own starry night. So let's meet some of the residents of the arts quarter, shall we? Starting off with this prestigious penthouse overlooking the main square live the Hunter family. Baron Hunter, his new wife Addison Hunter and Baron's teenage children Isla and Zach. Baron is a very successful CEO of a tech company in the heart of the city. After his wife passed away, he found solace with his receptionist who knew this would be the perfect moment to strike for the man she has always wanted. Addison is your stereotypical gold hunter. She had her sights on Baron from day one and now prides herself on how much money she can rinse from him before growing bored of the thrill, including a rather now public affair with another San Marciuno resident. More on that one later. Isla, who loathes her new stepmom, is a comedian at heart. Forever making people laugh around her throughout her life, she has taken to this skill and hopes to become a stand-up comic in the near future. Her brother Zach, who also detests Addison, is one of the trendsetters of his age group, constantly thinking of the next best thing in fashion and is hoping to do something in college with this skill after he leaves school. The teens do everything they can to make Addison's life a living hell with hopes one day their dad will finally see the light. 
Now over the square to this newly built apartment block, Medina Studios. And into this newly moved into apartment are the Morland family. Grace Morland, who is the auntie of Isla and Zach, moved to San Marjuno to be closer to her niece and nephew after the death of her sister. She lives here with her retired husband, Harley, and their pride and joy, Mr. Paul's the Dalmatian. Grace was a family counselor back at home, but has recently taken up the role as a professor of psychology at San Maishuno University. She is taking her role of auntie very seriously and being there for Isla and Zach whenever they need her. Harley, who is retired from the military, is more than happy to be back on his home turf of San Maishuno. And you can see him and Mr. Paul's most days wandering about, taking in the atmosphere of his beloved home. Now over to one of their neighbors. Living in this small studio apartment is Theodore Roswell. Originally from Strangerville, Theo set out to San Marjuno for a better life. Theo is a very talented self-taught artist and hopes to one day make it big with his amazing talents. Working as a barista to pay his rent and not much else, leaves Theo plenty of time to hone his craft. You'll find him in the Arts Quarter Square selling some of his work or perusing the galleries of San Marjuno MoMA to feed his inspiration and manifest his dreams of having his work here one day. Now over to the final residence of Medina Studios. In this shared space live Isabel Rothenberg and her housemate Elliot Dubois. They have known each other since they were very small children living in Henford on Bagley and their fathers are also business partners with the multi-billion Simoleon Corporation Rothenberg and Dubois. Isabel hates the fact that she comes from a rich family. Her father put a stop to her passion of becoming an astronaut so she could take over the family business when he is no longer here. So she spends her days resenting this and hoping to either run away one day or faking a mysterious disappearance. Elliot is more than happy for a free ride to the top. He relies on his father's name in many aspects of his life. So if nepotism is going to help him have an easy life, then so be it. Now, the only problem of these two living together in their father's building is that they truly cannot stand each other. We now fly over to the final apartment block of the Arts Quarter, Hakeem House. Living in this apartment are the Wiseman family, the father, Sterling, mother, Rita, and their teenage children, Hugo and Liberty. Sterling is one of the top lawyers in all of San Marjuno. Constantly angry and overworked, he spends his days in the foulest of moods and the furthest away he can get from his family. Rita is completely fed up. Her advertisement business bores her to tears. Her husband bores her to tears. And her children annoy her every single day. She is counting down the days the teens are off to college and she can finally divorce their father and move far, far away. Hugo and Liberty are not like their parents in the slightest. They stay out of their parents' way and keep each other in good spirits. They too are counting down the days they will get their own lives and it couldn't come any sooner. Now into the final apartment we'll be touring in the Arts Quarter. Home to Rex, his fiance V, and their new baby Dali. Rex, who is a transgender male, is a world-renowned art critic. Nothing is art unless Rex says so, according to the Critical Eye magazine. His eye for detail and colour in all art forms is unmatched and has recently noticed an up-and-coming artist on the San Marjuno's art scene. V, who uses they-them pronouns, is also renowned, but in the interior design field, their flamboyant use of colour and texture attracts all manner of celebrity clients to their portfolio. But with a new baby in the household, work has stopped for them both for a while, and they finally feel they can breathe properly. 
Now on to a new area of the city, the fashion district. With its modern high-rise apartments, vast penthouses, and famous coffee shop, it has everything you want in a modern city. We'll start our tour at Skywalk Square, a modern development in the main area of the fashion district. The cafe is famous throughout the city, with its coffee reigning supreme as the best San Maichuno has to offer. Sit outside, sip away, and take in the sights this part of the city is famous for. Above the cafe is a bar selling all manners of drinks. Take a seat overlooking the city below and enjoy one of the many cocktails the bar has to offer. Next door is a photography studio where many designers come to get their collections showcased. Below is a gallery of fashion from the past to get your senses rumbling. We start with our Fashion District residence at Zen View Apartments. Housemates and best friends Desta and Ali. Ali is an esteemed fashion stylist working for the uber chic brand Batiste. As much as she loves her job, her dream is to start her own size inclusive fashion brand in the very near future. Her best friend Desta is a supermodel but only to fund her university degree to become a surgeon. The pair met a few years ago at San Marciuno Fashion Week and hit it off instantly. They decided to move in together to help out with the rising rental costs throughout the city. But things started to change between them and they both have started to fall for each other in a completely new way. We move over to the girl's neighbor's apartment. Living here are three guys all chasing the dream of becoming an actor. Sheldon Lott, Otis O'Connell and Oliver Wallace. Sheldon is fighting his way onto the big screen. He's had a few minor roles in various sitcoms and adverts, but nothing life-changing as of yet. Otis is pretty much the same. A few roles here and there, but nothing to write home to Ireland about. Especially his embarrassing role in a hemorrhoid cream advert. Oliver doesn't take the acting as seriously as his housemates. He just wants money and he gets it wherever he can make it. The boys like to party a lot. You can always count on them for a good time no matter what time of day or night and no matter the venue it's in. Now we fly over to Chic Street Apartments and the first resident we will be meeting is Samson Erickson. Samson is a travel vlogger and an all-round lovable rogue. You'll not find Samson in San Marjuno all that often. He travels the world documenting his adventures for all to see on SimTube. Whether that is searching through wrecked aircraft in the desert, climbing volcanoes in Sulani, or braving the bitter temperatures of the snowy mountains of Mount Komarebi. But he's decided to finally settle some roots down in San Marciuno to start writing a travel book. And with help from one of his idols, he feels the city could be the perfect home. And over the hallway lives Samson's idol, Miguel Richardson. Miguel has traveled the world multiple times and written hundreds of books on the hidden wonders the world has to offer. From trekking through the jungles to find the lost door of the Jaina Nana, to hunting for the elusive folklore of the Loch Ness Monster, or just sulking up the local culture wherever he can get it. But these days, you can find him at home taking life a little easier, mentoring his friend Samson with his mountains of travel knowledge. But something else is keeping his anchor down in San Maishuno, or rather yet, someone else. His love for his neighbor Ivy is only new, but the pair have been growing in love more every day. 
So let's meet the final residents of Chic Street Apartments. Ivy Rivers and her cats Coco and Dior. Ivy was once a very famous seamstress in the city, but after losing a legal battle for her haberdashery shop, the place was pulled down and replaced by a high-rise apartment block. As a goodwill gesture, the city gave her 500,000 simoleons and a small apartment for life. So she now lives her days at home with her two loves and is hoping something amazing will come from her new relationship with Miguel. Now we move on to the most exclusive address in the whole city, Terendi Tower Penthouse. In this vast penthouse live the Crawley family. Dad, Winston, Mum, Amelia, and their children, Nicholas, Florence, and Elliot. Winston is the CEO of the world's leading tech giant, Simple. His company has raked in billions of simoleons in profits over the years, and his wealth has attracted someone new to his life. Winston is having an affair with Addison Hunter. The affair is now public knowledge, and his wife, Amelia, has recently filed for a divorce. Amelia is a fashion editor for Style, the world's leading fashion magazine. After learning the news about her husband's portrayal, she plans on getting as much money from him as possible and taking the family home for herself and the children. Florence is very unlike her parents. Her dream is to become a writer and she's just about to start her first term at the University of Brightester studying English literature. Nicholas is also unlike his parents. He plans on saving the world one day with his technological creations and making the world a better place to live. Elliot is a little shit, spoiled, bratty and self-assured. He gets what he wants when he wants, much to the annoyance of his siblings. We now fly over to the final area of San Myshuno, the Uptown District, with its penthouse nightclub, world-renowned spa, and skyline apartments. This is the newest and most sought-after area to live in the city. We'll start our tour at Gaia Health Spa and Gym, a five-star establishment overlooking the city below. Unwind with a hot stone massage in one of the many treatment rooms. Have your stress relieved with a relaxing foot massage. Sit in the aromatherapy sauna and melt your stresses away. Meditate and reach enlightenment in the meditation suite. Take a dip in the spring water infinity pool. Sip a fresh pressed juice at the bar. Lounge in the hot springs and unwind your senses. If you're feeling energetic, use the state-of-the-art equipment in the gym area. Or relax on the rooftop with a yoga class overlooking the city. After a relaxing trip to the spa, why not come up to Clouds the nightclub? Perched on the highest point of the city, Clouds is the place to be in the evenings. Grab a cocktail and sit out on the terrace overlooking everything around you and enjoying tunes from the piano. Take a hit on one of the bubble shishas and try some new flavors. Dance the night away to the many DJ headliners that frequent this popular club. Or just take in the 360 degree views this club has to offer. So let's meet the first residents of the Uptown District. Starting off at the rather prestigious Alto Apartments live the Astor family. Living in a very opulent and garish apartment is mother and matriarch Margaret Astor, her son Robert Astor and their overworked butler Jeeves. Margaret spends her days living in luxury, reading her books, drinking copious amounts of tea, and bossing Jeeves around. Robert is the mob boss of a very high-profile criminal group. 
he makes tons of money from any dastardly deed he can take control of. The Astor family name strikes fear into many residents of San Myshuno. So if I was you, I'd stay well clear of them. So let's meet the neighbours over the hall, the Hampton family. Mum, Janae, Dad, Jackson, and their teenagers, Liana and Kyla. This family is not your everyday family. They have one of the most successful SimTube channels in the world, at home with the Hamptons. They vlog their daily lives together, their travels together, and their pranks together. People love them throughout the world for their charitable donations and for always standing up for what is right. They love spending all of their time with one another and are hoping the life they live can last for many more years to come. Now over to a new apartment block, the Land Grab Apartments. The first residents I'd like to introduce are the Carter sisters, Molly Carter and Caitlin Carter. Originally from Chestnut Ridge, the sisters moved to San Myshuno after landing a record deal with their amazing music. Now with multiple awards behind them and three albums they wrote and produced themselves, the path to stardom is there for the taking. But they miss the rolling plains of home and are hoping to move back to Chestnut Ridge soon and produce all of their music there in a place they love more than anywhere. We continue on with the final household of the Land Grab Apartments. Meet Nia Garcia and her husband Daniel. Nia and Daniel met in university many years ago at a protest for Earth United. They got married and tried for children, but sadly they weren't able to conceive. So they decided to adopt and slowly their family grew. First came Brianna, then came Juniper, then came Axel, and then came Duncan. Their household finally feels full and the pair are taking every day within their stride. Nia is the mayor of San Marciuno. She devotes her life to making the city a better place to live and with close contact with a rather elusive superhero, the pair have pulled forces to make San Marciuno one of the safest cities to live in. Now for the final apartment and household of San Marciuno. Living in this apartment block is Shari, her girlfriend Sasha, and their robot, Pam. Shari is a superhero. She secretly goes by the name of Nyx and is the city's protector. You'll find her only working in the darkness to bring light and safety to every citizen in San Marciuno. Sasha is her right-hand woman and the brains behind every operation, with help from Pam, of course. If the pair aren't saving the world, they are lounging at home, watching movies, and living a rather normal-ish life. And so we come to the end of our tour. And what better place to stop and take everything in than San Myshuno Park? A modern development with everything you could need in one place. A skywalk to take you up into the tree canopies and through the park to the other side. A children's play area with swings, a sand pit and a splash pad to cool off in those summer days. A community garden to pick fresh herbs and produce and take home with you for free. The park cafe to stop and unwind with a fresh coffee and pastry. The Arches wedding venue to have a special occasion with all your friends and family. A barbecue area to fry up some burgers and watch the world go by. An outdoor gym, multiple areas to sit and chill and a stage to watch your favorite entertainers perform. So there we have it. San Myshuno, the ultimate save file. Have fun with these stories. 
and I'll see you back in Henford on Bagley for the next one. <laughs>